All right, for today's lesson, we are going to be doing a squid dissection virtual lab. So you all should have a sheet of paper in front of you that says squid dissection virtual lab. It has, says background information. And then on the back, it has a diagram of the squid that we're going to be looking at. For homework, you do not have homework today. All right. As we go through today's lesson, we're going to be talking about lots of things about the squid. And we're going to be really getting familiar with the squid and knowing about the squid because it is a marine organism. And we have looked at life in the ocean, correct? Yes. Okay. So yeah, I thought that it would be a good idea for us to actually get a little bit deeper in the life in the ocean and play the role of a marine biologist so we can really understand some of um, marine life, especially marine life that is still kind of a mystery to us. So let's go ahead and take a look. Just as a review, and you all were quizzed on this yesterday, the breakdown of classification or the classification breakdown, what's the first thing, the very, very top thing? Domain, good. And that's up here, I didn't put it right here, but then we have kingdom, and then what's next? Aaliyah. 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 That has a PH. Phylum, good. Then what comes next? Jaden, do not yell it out. Go ahead, Kenesha. Class. Jaden? Order. What's next, Samaje? Family. What's after family? Genus. And lastly, Katoya? Species. And remember, we do have domain, which is the largest. And that belongs at the very top. What domain is a squid? What domain is a squid? Kanisha? You know, it can only be one of how many? Uh, how many domains are there? How many domains are there? Quatoria, three domains. So what domain is it? Look in your notes. None of you should be clueless. Aaliyah, put all that stuff away. You think that a squid is archaebacteria? Does that look like bacteria? Eukarya. Because in the eukarya domain, it includes what? In the eukarya domain, raise your hand and tell me what does it include? Who's there in the back? Antasia. Multi multicellular organisms. So then tell me the kingdoms that are included for um, eukarya domain. Animal kingdom, anything else? Yeah. Who? What other kingdom? Th that's not a kingdom. You should have your notes out and be able to tell me the other kingdoms. Savani? That's not a kingdom. Plants is a kingdom. What's another kingdom? Um, Amira? Fungi. fungi or fungi, that's a kingdom. Kutoria? That's not, yes, that is a kingdom. I apologize, yes. And then there's one more, there's two more actually. Protus, and then one more. U bacteria. You all should be looking at your notes where we wrote down six kingdoms and we put it in a triangle. There should be no reason why you're getting that wrong if you have your notes. So, what kingdom? Is this squid? Oh, no. This is their animal kingdom. It's in the phylum mollusca. Who remembers what mollusca means? Um, Talia? Soft. It's in your class, cephalopoda or cephalopod. What does that mean? What does cephalopod mean? Joel? Oh, no. Head, foot. Look where the squid, look where his eyes are, and look where his feet are. So it has feet on the head. Pod means what? Foot. Very good. Cephalo means what? Excellent. Now this is in the order called um, Tethuda, Tethida, whatever. It's in the family 
try to pronounce that. Lolingde. It's in the genus Loligo. And it's in our species, Brevapena. So what's its specific what's its specific name, Kanisha? Good. Loligo Brevapena. What's the purpose of this whole classification? What's the reason why we do this? Talia. To make a universal language that we understand around the world. And when we say we, we mean we as scientists understand around the world. Any questions about this? Okay, awesome. So then let's move on. Alrighty. So looking at the squid on the screen here, you will notice these are the tentacles. How many tentacles or arms does a squid have? Uh, Malik. Makai, I apologize. Ten. Eight arms and two tentacles. And they're very, very, very long so that they, ha they can reach out and grab things. Excuse me, what do you want? All right. With that, they also have their eyes. Remember, it's connected to their head. You can sit right there. It's connected to their head, so they have well-developed eyes. They have this thing called a pen that sticks right by their head, and that actually connects to their, in, their internal um, shell. Which remember, they have an internal shell, and they're an invertebrate. So they have an internal shell there, and that helps them to give that dolphin-like movement and that gliding through the, um, through the ocean that they're able to move. And they have their fins that helps them swim. Then they have these things called chromatophores. Now, chromat means color. So what do you think the chromatophores are for? Joelle, help them change colors. All these little things will help them change colors in the water. So squid have inner what? Squid have inner what? Shells, good. Which means they are invertebrate. This is what their eyes look like. They're well-developed eyes. So it kind of looks like our eyes. And they're on the sides here. I know, you know, right? Imagine swimming and this bumped into your head. Uh -huh. They don't need to. Squid and octopus are the same class, which is the class of what? What class are they in? Oh, no. No, molluscus is the phylum. What class are they in, Kanisha? Cephalopod, which means what again? Head foot. Head foot, awesome. And they have a lot of similarities, but they look different from one another. Here you have your octopus. Here you have your squid. Okay? Now let's look at our notes that we have in front of us and see if you can fill in the blanks. Squid is one of the most highly developed what? It is an animal, but it also has an internal shell, so it would be called a what? what? Say it again. Invertebrate. Make sure you are filling in your notes. It's in the phylum what? What phylum is it in? Mollusca, which means soft. So Latin word meaning soft body, and it's also a Greek word. It belongs to what class again? Cephalopod. Very good. Meaning head foot. Because its head is pushed down toward the foot, that's why we call it the cephalopod. This class also includes what? Octopus. Very good. Moving on to the next paragraph. Why don't someone read that for me? Kanisha's the only one that's in class today? And Thalia, they're the only two in class today. <coughs> Jamia, you want to read? Uh, Jamaya, do you want to read that second one? Uh, uh, don't say blank. Let everyone look in their notes. I just talked about it. Plus, we also have notes on the mal malas. They have this 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 skin like over them, and it starts with an M. Thalia, nope. 
Look on your notes that we took the other day, where we had mollusk on the back as your classification notes. What's that skin called? That's with an M. Joel. Mantle, very good. Jemiah, continue. How many arms? How many? Eight arms with two longer feeding tentacles. And they all have suckers on them. The longer tentacles have them at the very end. The arms have them all the way down so they can grab stuff and bring them in. Continue. Siphon. Three hearts. Continue. Us. Human. The odds are, are, are very structured to eye, ours. Looks like our, our eyes. Keep going. Chitness. The chitness is kind of like cartilage. Kind of like the gristle of a chicken bone. Alright, moving on. You're good. Oh, wait, I'm gonna, no, we're not, we're not moving to reading. We're going to look at some things first. Now if we flip the squid over to its back, the other side was it's, it's laying on its stomach. Now it will be laying on its back. Here, again, we see the arms and we see the long tentacles. The eyes are still on the side, but you have this siphon. This siphon is what sucks in the water and spits it out so it can give that squid that what type of propulsion? Jet. Jet-like propulsion and move right through. And then you have your fin and your mantle. Squid breathe using their gills. Remember, they're underwater. They don't come out of the water. They move by squirting water from the mantle through, what did I say? Siphon. Very good. They use a type of movement called what? Jet propulsion. Awesome. They can move both ways. How? They can go this way or that way. Yes, forward and backward. So they're not limited. They don't just move forward. They can also go backwards. Just by changing the direction of the water through their siphon. So they can get to prey or, uh, or get away from a predator. Or if they notice prey behind them, they can go back that way. But notice their eyes are on the side, so they are going to move their body. Same thing like what? Yes, yeah, squid pick up um, senses through their tentacles as well. Yep, sensory organs. Um, can you hear me, though? You can hear what I'm saying, so you really don't need to see it. You can hear it. All right. This is still with the squid on its back. And it's stomach facing up, so everything is still the same there. Savani, go ahead and read that for us aloud. Propulsion. Propulsion. Mm -hmm. Predator. Because remember, it's able to gather things, it's able to get at things. Continue. Mechanism. Yeah, exactly, change the color. They have something called an ink sac. 
Nope, they, they don't actually release it. It's, it. it's it assumed that they do release it from their tentacles, but they actually don't. They have an ink sac inside of them, and they're able to get it out. It's like us spitting on someone. That's how they release the ink so that they can get away. We're going to see that in a moment. It's on the board. Continue, Savani. Escape their attacker. That could be. You could put that word there if you want. Or confuse. Escape or confuse. Continue reading. Good. So you don't want to put escape there because you already have them escaping here. So they kind of confuse them. No. It's just something to be able to cloud their vision. All right. Any questions? Okay. Now we open up the squid. So we cut it open. And we're going to look at the inside of the squid. And now when we open it up, we can look inside. Jaden, hit the lights a little bit so everyone can see better. And I'm going to zoom in just a little bit for you all. Because looking on the inside, first, here, here's your ink sac. Right here. And when, right in this area here. And when you look over here, it's here. We have a female, we have a male, and it shoots, and it comes out of their siphon. Like when they shoot water, that's how they shoot the ink. It comes through their siphon. Um, this is the siphon cut open. Here you have, this is the male, so this would be the gonad. This is where they hold the sperm. This is the female, so this would be her ovary where she actually holds her eggs. This is the pen that goes all the way down from the tip of the squid all the way down to, it's all the way down its back. Um by its, head, its eyes, which allows it to have that movement to go up and down. Um, trying to see what else is in there. They have their kidneys, their intestines. Here are their gills so that they can breathe underwater. Um, they have a retractor muscle, which helps them to do that movement. Let's see what else is good to know in here. Their stomach. They have a gill heart, a heart that works for their gills. They have a cardiovascular heart, but you can't see it in here. It's underneath. And they have another heart for reproduct, uh, reproductive heart. <clears throat> that's the stuff that's in the hopes helps comfort their eggs when they, it's like a mucus type stuff. It's on the other side that, because that, this is the stomach. We opened it up from its stomach. The inner shell's on the other side. It's the pen. Also, with that being said, just so you know that the stomach here. Their brain is underneath, so their food passes through their brain. So it's called brain food. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, can I get another volunteer to read? Go ahead, Kanisha. Okay. Good. Very good. What do parrots have? Beaks. Beaks. They actually, in the inside, um, once that food comes, um, I'm sorry, their brain is not underneath their stomach. Their brain is where they have their eyes here. We can't see it on this. But they have their eyes and their tentacles. Their brain is in there by their eyes. So when they pull food in from their tentacles or their arms, there's a beak in there. There's a little beak, and we're going to look at it in a moment. It's a buccal bulb is there, and then there's a beak. And it rips the prey open with their beak. And then it gets through, and it passes through their brain all the way up to their intestines, to their stomach. I want you to chill out for a second, um, Jaden. How do they what? To grab stuff. They're they, they able to feel things out, taste things, find out what prey is. Okay, continue, Kanisha. What did I tell you? Very good, the brain. So 
Good. They will even eat little squid. Yep. They they would eat if they, if need be they would eat it. All right. Here is a picture of squid eggs. Little baby squids are in these eggs. All right. Can I get a volunteer? They do kind of. Can I get a volunteer to read? Here. Go ahead, Erica. Stop for a second. When it says elongated eggs, strings meaning strings and strings of eggs attached, not just 50 eggs or 10 eggs, meaning like 10 strings of eggs. So like 10 of these things or 50 of these things. Yeah. Go ahead. See? See? What zone, what, what do you think they're attached to? <laughs> well, well, think about this, think about this. They can't swim yet, they can't float, they don't want them to be around predators, so where do you think they will put their eggs? Uh, on the ocean floor, which is called what zone? The benthic zone. Continue. Now, they say that animal, that we, us humans, are the most sophisticated organisms. However, when us mothers have you babies, we must take care of you for 18 years. However, well, you definitely, once we have you, after 10 days, we definitely can't leave you on your own to take care of yourself. 10 days, this mama's gone. You're, you're, you're on your own, buddy. Makai. That's something that they just adapt to in life. Something that's innate and adapted to them. Something that they just learn through experience. Uh, not very big. They're about this big when they when they are finally asked. They're not very big. Some people have eaten octopus. You could. Let's move on. I want to continue. So now going back, going back to the exterior but kind of digging deep into the interior, here again you have the arms and the suckers. This sucker is like all the way down here but we can't see it. But we cut open that um, area where their, their head is and their eyeballs are. And inside you have something called a buccal bulb. In that buccal bulb is the actual um, beak. And then that's where they chew it. And it passes through their esophagus where their brain is. But this is the buccal ball. And this is their esophagus back here. So this is their beak. And it, it chews right through it just like a parrot would do. Opening up their beak, like when you learn to look face onto the beak, that's what it looks like. It rips right through it. That beak is tough. Hey. All right. So, a reader. Go ahead, Joel. Okay. Squid are important. Food web. Because they can get rid of certain things. Because that food web needs to continue. Certain things need to eat other things and certain things need to eat it. So it's a very important part of the food web. Continue. What's something that people eat when people eat squid? What is it? Calamari. What is it? Calamari. Very good. Continue, Joel. However, overfishing is a growing trend because there are no regular 
What does that mean, Erica? Right, they don't have a rule on, okay, no squid fishing now. People are just doing it as they may. So, looking at the food web, we have a food web here, and we see, we know how a food web works, where here's a squid over here. A squid can eat a large fish, but guess what? A large fish can also eat a squid. Squid will eat things like krill, but penguins will eat things like squid. Um... So it, it just goes back and forth. It's a very important part. And then we also eat squid, like things like calamari. Some people just fry the squid whole in other parts of the country. Some people will eat raw parts of it. I know. Here's the calamari here. Some people put it on a shish kebab. All right. Someone read this uh, last paragraph for us. Go ahead, Talia. Uh-uh, try to sound it out. The CH sounds like a K. That sounds about right to me. That's a Greek word. Because they too deep in deep oceans. So here we go. Here's a little little baby squid like we saw. Here's another little little one. This is uh, then you have a large one. You have an even bigger one. They never found one that's alive. They took it out of the water. They took it out of the water so they could put it here. This is dead. They probably uh, fish for it. Is that pink one alive? Probably not. All right. Let's now label our squid. We're going to label our squid. If you flip your paper over to the back, you will notice that you have these pictures there. And from uh, what we've just learned, let's see if we can actually label our squid. So, here we have these little things here with suckers on them. And they actually help to pull the prey into the mouth. What are those? Arms. arms. There's eight of them. These are arms. Turn on one of the lights. All right. Here they have two of these long things that reach out to grab prey. What is that? Tentacles. So number two is tentacles, or it has the number two next to so it is tentacles. On the end of the tentacles, they have suckers to grab prey. What are those called? They are called suckers. <laughs> the sucker. All right. This thing that helps uh, the squid with its jet like propulsion sucks water in, pushes water out. What was that called again? That's the siphon. S I P H O N, siphon. Hold on, chill out. Don't yell out, please.
All right. This skin here, all of this skin, it protects the internal organs. That's not an inner shell. What's that skin stuff called? Started with an M. That's your mantle. Yep, this is your mantle. And it's pointing to the skin. Then you have these little dots on it that can be made larger or smaller to change the color of the squid. What was that? Chroma what? Chroma pier. Chroma four. Chroma four. Remember, chroma means. Or you can call them chromatids. Chill out. Stop yelling out. First, raise your hand. Chromatids, is that enough? Or chromophores. Chromatophores, not chromophores, chromatophores. But we'll say chromatids. Then you have these things here, which help them to swim. This is your fins. Yes, Jaden. Jaden. We're doing whatever's labeled here. Please don't tell me we didn't do anything. We did everything that's labeled. Yes, we did. We did that first. Yes, we did. They're suckers. All right, moving to the next picture. We said that already. Finn, guys, you have to pay attention. Moving over. Here again is checking... This is called the club, even though we called it suckers, it's fine. It's just it's called a club because it looks like kind of like a club arm. But if we put suckers, that's fine. If you put siphon here, that's fine. Siphon is the funnel. Moving on to the internal. This part has a beak. For chewing its prey. What is that? The what? It's called its what though? Where, where, your, it, its mouth. This is the mouth. These things are for seeing. Eyes. This here, this is your digestive gland. So this box here is your digestive gland. No, it's called your digestive gland because it produces digestive juices. That's your digestive gland. This middle thing in the middle of your digestive gland or his digestive gland it runs through digestive glands and the brain too, and it carries food to the stomach. What carries food to your stomach? Esophagus. It's on. Moving way down here. This helps steer the squid and has two of them. This is your funnel retractor muscle. And I'll funnel F U N N E L retractor meaning it helps it retracts open and closes muscle. 
Run over track and muscle. Then here, you have your gills that pump blood. This is your gill heart. This thing right here that I'm going to outline a little bit, that's pointing right here. This removes waste from the blood. This is the kidney. So notice it's really sophisticated like us. It has a lot of organs like us. This is a male one that we're looking at. So this stuff here, it, or even if it was a female one, it would still be here. So it's kind of dual organ right here so we can see both. But this would be your gonad. Pay attention. If you stop talking, you can hear me perfectly fine. Kidney. All right, shh. Pay attention. Over to the left side, right near underneath the kidney. This is another heart. Nope, they have all three. They need them all three. Shh. Just put heart. Then they could die. All right. These things, these things here on both sides, this one and this one, these are what? They look like feathers. What are these things, Celia? No? Gills, thank you. They don't have lungs, they have gills. So it removes oxygen from the water and eliminates carbon dioxide. This, okay, pay attention. This line is pointing to, and I'll outline it, this thing here. Yep. And that carries, uh, produces ink for the protection. And that's the ink stack. And then underneath there, you have something that carries food to the buttocks, to the anus, for getting rid of waste. And that's your intestine. Intestine. And then your last box that you have here eliminates waste. That's the anus, the buttocks. It's closely connected to the ink sac. Are we good with the labeling? Which one? I, I've labeled them all. All right. Because now we're going to go deeper into our virtual investigation. Pumps blood. That's another heart. Hold on. All right, let's answer these questions. Take a moment to work with your partner and answer these questions. Actually, let's do this. Before you answer these questions, let's actually go deeper into our investigation of squid dissection without talking. Quiet. 
What it has, it is in a squid dissection pan. And you're not, you don't hear anything because there is no sound. On the squid, basically the gentleman, I have another video that um, actually is showing me dissecting, but I want to be able to show this on the video for the class, so I'm going to show this video. So this outer layer of skin is called what? The mantle. The mantle. Very good. He has the back that he's showing, and that has the pen in the back. And I'm going to fast forward just a little bit so he gets ready to cut it open. Okay, raise your hand and ask questions. Yes, I did have one at home and I dissected. I'll show you guys in a little bit. So he's just showing you the tentacles here in the inside. He's showing you the suckers on there. And then pretty soon he's going to cut off the tentacles so that we can see the buccal bulb and the beak. He's going to use dissecting scissors to do this. And he's going to cut off the tentacles just so you can see the tentacles a little better. And he's also going to cut the beak out, cut the siphon, I mean not the siphon, the buccal bulb so that you can see the beak. And that's what they do when they're ready to cook calamari. That's what they do. So I'm going to fast for a little more so we can go a little faster with that. So here is the mouth with the beak on the inside. Now he's about to open the mouth up so that he can get the beak all the way out to show you the buccal bulb and the beak. So I'm going to fast forward while he's getting his twos together. He's going to use the dissecting forceps. And he, probably, he can also use his hand to pull it out, but it is kind of tough. So there's the buccal bulb. <laughs> and in that buccal bulb is the beak. So in just a moment, he's going to be able to get that beak out so you can see the beak. It's very slippery. And there, one second, let me zoom down. There is the beak. Chomps right through it. The beak is very strong. Now we're going to get to the nitty gritty. He's going to be able to cut this squid open. He's cutting it from the stomach, uh, laying it on its back, like looking stomach up. Yep, the nose are caught um, pins, and you hold it down. <laughs> And that blue stuff in the dissecting pan, sometimes it's black, sometimes it's blue. It's like a wax where you can stick things in there. So when you're holding it down, you can see exactly what you're doing. I don't see a bug, guys. Where? I don't see anything moving. So now he's going to take it. Another dissecting tool. And these are your teasing needles that he's using at pointing at it or lifting things up or showing you different things. I'm just going to fast forward some more. No. So he's just, I'm going to be stopping this video because he's just going through all the things that we looked at um, 
I, want, I don't know if he's going to. I think you guys are just seeing the reflection. I don't think you see the bug. No, that's blood right here. That's blood just rolling through because it's very wet. That's not a bug. That's blood. Because he's moving the pan. As he's taping, he's moving the pan. All right. So what I want you all to do is back on your paper. I want you to go back with your, first I want you to do this independently, uh, quiet. I want you to work on these questions with your partner, or no, I'm sorry, independently, and then we'll come together and we'll look at these uh, questions.